Betsy, look at these beans. We must plant some of them. Oh, Bill, we must plant corn, too. I wonder if the vegetables in our garden will grow as large as these in the seed catalog. During the past few days, Bill and Betsy have been making a plan for their garden. They have used books and bulletins on gardening from their school library. Father likes the plan. But the soil must be dry before Betsy and Bill can start the garden. Mr. Allen tests the soil. As he squeezes it, the soil does not make a ball. It crumbles. The soil is dry. Betsy and Bill can start preparing their garden. The earth is spaded deep and the soil is turned over. The soil is loosened thoroughly so that the tender roots can grow through it easily. A fertilizer has elements in it which green plants use in making their food. The fertilizer must be mixed with the soil. In this rich, loose soil, plant roots will now find plenty of nourishment. Each of these tiny seeds has food stored in it. The baby plant will use this food in getting its start in life. Bill plants the radish seeds very close together. From each healthy seed will come one young radish plant. Betsy covers the seeds lightly with soil. They will now germinate and grow if they have enough moisture and warmth. There has been no rain for several, so Bill waters the garden with the hose. The first crop of radishes is large enough for the table. Next week, there will be another crop. Food made in the leaves with the help of sunlight has been stored in a swelling in the root. Bill proudly gives his mother the first harvest from the garden. It has meant much work, but it's worth it. As you can tell, the days of flipping through the seed catalog and picking out vegetables to grow in your garden are long gone. However, the process of gardening hasn't changed much over the last 100 years. Let's look back at what made small gardens so popular, even in urban areas. Victory Gardens During World War I and II, these victory gardens were planted in the U.S. as well as other countries to alleviate the need for food production. On this farm in the rolling hill country of northern Maryland, the Holters, rallying to the call for more food, join the growing army of victory gardeners. This is Dad Holder. He helps with the heavy work. Mother, well, she helps with most everything. Grandpa Holder, he says the only honest way to get a mess of peas or a crown of glory is to work for it. Brother Bill is in the army, but Dick, 14 years old, takes his place. And this is Jane, just 16. Now let's see on this little model of their quarter acre garden, the plan they work out. Here's the early garden. Here, four rows of early potatoes. Then two double rows of peas, early, medium, and late. One row of cabbage, double row of carrots and beets, half a row of each. One double row of greens, spinach, mustard, turnips, and chard. Tomatoes, early and late, wilt resistant. Peppers, half a row. Radishes, lettuce, and onions next to the house. Asparagus and rhubarb beds are at the side. Pole beans, three rows. Four rows of sweet corn along the fence. And finally, two rows of lima beans complete the early garden. Just one of thousands of such farm gardens. Just a sample that you can match in most any community in America. Each a health insurance policy, a dooryard savings bank. Each a vitamin mine from which you can take stuff more precious than silver or gold.
But remember what Grandpa says. No work, no garden. Get what that means. No work, no spuds. No work, no turnip, no tank, no flying fortress, no victory. Bear that in mind, all you victory gardeners, and work for victory. Now eventually these types of gardens became part of everyday life. We may not call them victory gardens today, but they are still very popular. Even our first lady, Michelle Obama, has suggested home gardening and community gardens as a way to produce healthy food options for all families. Now you don't need much room, take for instance the container garden. You can plant various veggies in containers on your patio or deck. This garden was planted in extra buckets at a home in Brooklyn, New York. My interest in gardening has grown over the past few years. I had a container garden for a couple of years. Here's a picture of my tomatoes. And this year, I planted a 30 by 50 foot section of my yard. Now, thankfully, with technology, I wasn't pulling a plow with a mule to till up the land. Many use small garden tillers like this one. I was fortunate enough to have a friend who brought his tractor over and made quick work of the ground. The garden bed was ready in about 30 minutes. Now, there's no feeling quite like the feeling of seeing those first sprouts pop out of the ground. It's a feeling of accomplishment. With a little hard work and some persistence, watering and weeding, a successful garden is well worth the trouble. Let me encourage you to think about planting a garden of some sort this spring. And with any luck, you'll be canning fresh tomatoes and pickles just like I was this year. To close, let me leave you with a more current video of how gardening can be done. Well, I'm Lisa Blair and I'm the principal of E.C. Reams Academy of Technology and Arts. Mm -hmm. We're located in East Oakland, California, which is a highly uh, volatile, disadvantaged community. My name is Jason Harvey, the uh, current director of Oakland Food Connection. This is just mostly just came out of uh, the idea of setting up rooftop gardens at, uh, in particular, small charter schools. So today we're building uh, two garden beds, the first two garden beds for uh, E.C. Reams. And here's a model of them over here. Uh, pretty much. This is 20 inches in depth, which would be really good for like lettuce, for example, um, carrots. We'll, we'll figure out over a school year what we're going to do with this bed, but this is pretty much the, the basic layout for today. We'll lift them up a little bit more with these here. So they'll sit up a couple of inches off the ground, have some room to drain. So we have a couple of students from um, Unity High School, Candido. We have uh, Edwin. We have Amato. We have Martin. And uh, Ari Ariana from uh, Bay Localize. One of my fifth grade classes about a year ago went to Jack London Square. They were going to the movies and the farmer's market happened to be open. And they ended up spending the entire day at farmer's market because our students had no idea that there were a variety of tomatoes or half the vegetables that were in the marketplace. And our children eat primarily fast foods because their parents are, are working in the evenings mm -hmm. and uh, they're responsible for the meals. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to provide them with an idea of a balanced diet, uh, broaden their sense of what vegetables encompass and how they can affect the health in their lives and their parents' lives as well. Two premises. Uh, one is that there's no electricity. And two, there's no gasoline, there are no petrochemicals. I say this is all we have to work with for today and we want to build three garden beds. How do we do that? For right now, we're maximizing each piece of wood and getting like two to three cuts out of it, which is really good. So that's always the premise that I work from in my head is that um, none of that exists. So I have to go back to um, a less uh, modernized approach and do things by hand meaning that um, I'm not thinking about uh, electricity. Oh, I have to get my saw, I saw my blade. We have our hand saws, we have our nails, our hammers, um, and we do everything just as simple as that. They like it, they, they I think they respect it a whole lot more versus taking a saw and, and doing a two second cut versus taking a hand saw and doing like a two minute cut. Total big difference and you feel a little bit different too. You feel, I feel stronger when I use my own hand saw. I feel 
more exercised. You want the hammer to do majority of the work. That's why it's heavy up here and loose down here. Well, I grew up here in East Oakland, so uh, many of the uh, gardens that I worked in since childhood uh, were backyard gardens. Well, just looking in the backyards uh, back here, there's lots of space not being used. So hopefully this garden here will encourage more people in the surrounding community to set up gardens in their backyards and see that there are students here that who are actually willing to help. We have uh, built several garden beds at Unity High School. We've put them all around the school. Several chemistry classes have tested the efficiency of our garden and it has come out with surprising results, way higher than, than, um, than USDA demands. So we're growing carrots, we're growing kale, lettuce, cabbage, tomatoes, broccoli, and our zucchinis. They're just wonderful. Mr. Harvey is our chef at Unity High School and he is he has helped to provide us with a much healthier diet than we usually get. Meat to vegetable ratio is much different than you might get anywhere else as opposed to getting more meat and less vegetables. We get more vegetables and less meat at Unity High School. A lot of people's diets have changed. As more people eat over there, they, they seem to develop a taste for vegetables more. A lot of them were actually surprised that vegetables could taste good when, when used the right way. The focus of food justice, uh, for me in particular, is making sure that people know about food, the politics of food, mm -hmm. and um, why there's a lack of access mm -hmm. to food in certain communities, and then creating systems, experiences, um, and tools to increase that access, and then to celebrate it as well. There's a culture behind it that I don't think uh, too many people talk about, the culture of food justice. Just pretty much celebrating good food and having good food all the time. Mm -hmm.